We've survived Hacker Summer Camp, but Microsoft and Adobe pull no punches. It's Patch Tuesday. Let's talk about it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the August 2025 Patch Report. I am Dustin Chaps, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Zero Day Initiative, and our Chief Patch Wrangler. We've got a bunch to talk about, over 100 CVEs from Microsoft, almost 70 from Adobe. Let's dive right into those Adobe bugs. Fortunately, they are not too damaging. They're, it's a big number, 13 bulletins, 68 unique CVEs in a bunch of different things, like every Substance 3D thing that they've ever bought. Uh, the only big one here, or the only one to really focus on immediately is commerce. That is priority two. However, Adobe says it is not in the wild or publicly known. Everything else is priority three. If you have to, if I had to put a second one, I would probably go with which one is it InDesign, I think that had uh, like 12 critical bugs in it or 14. So maybe look at that one too. And uh, of course, Photoshop uh, and Illustrator just because those get used a lot, but nothing terrible to see there. Moving on to Microsoft, 107 new CVEs in Windows and Windows Components, Office, blah, blah, blah. You know the rules. Um, so anyway, a bunch of different components. Let's start with the GDI Plus RCE CVSS 9.8. Why is it 9.8? Because it's essentially browse to a web page and you get code execution on the target. That is nasty. Um, probably not the likely scenario with GDI Plus, but it is the likely scenario with the Windows graphics components. Also a 9.8, and it is definitely browse and own. And both of these are really bad because they have so many components that use them. I mean, there's so many components that are dependent on these things. So yeah, test and deploy these ones quickly. Uh, watch out for your browsing and don't even think it's like, oh, I don't browse anywhere bad. Yeah, you ever heard of these things called ad networks? Yes, occasionally a rogue ad can get accepted into an ad network and appear on your system even though you're not going anywhere nefarious. So now let's move on to Office RCE, critical RCEs in Office. And you know what that means? Preview pane. This is a seven month, seventh month in a row where we've had some Office component that is rated critical because of the preview pane. Now, initially I thought it might be like broken patches or pass, patch bypasses, but as I look at the various components that are being serviced, I don't think that anymore. I think there's just like some undiscovered code that people have recently just started mining and that they are just discovering all of these bugs in the preview pane. One thing I, I am not flat out recommending it, I'm saying consider, consider disabling the preview pane until Microsoft kind of works this out and we see these bugs sort of slow down. So something to consider, not yet a recommendation, consideration. SharePoint, very hot topic over the last month. Uh, I've had a few things to say on it. Not sure if you've heard that or not, but uh, yeah, so SharePoint got hit, uh, publicly exploited using bugs that were initially disclosed at Pwn to Own Berlin. Um, this is not publicly exploited right now, this bug. I wanna be very clear on that. However, it is the same type of bug that is being publicly exploited is a deserialization bug. So what is being publicly exploited is an off bypass followed by a deserialization. This is a different deserialization, but the same sort of thing. So it, again, you would have to have that off bypass, uh, which is documented. So if you haven't patched, you're late uh, and you need to patch that. So that's why I call this out. It is not under active attack. I want to be very clear on that, but it is the sort of thing that we saw under active attack. We have one bug that is public and that's this Kerberos EOP. It's a moderate, don't sweat it. Look at all the stuff here. Uh, we'll move through this chart pretty quickly because there's a lot more things to discuss. So when we get down to the rest of the criticals, uh, obviously there's other office bugs that are critical uh, in Word and it's the same thing, preview pane. There's a three in Hyper-V. The one that concerns me most is the one where code execution could occur on the hypervisor. That's pretty cool. Um, there's an Azure Stack bug where it gets info disclosure over the network. It doesn't say what type of info is really disclosed, but they list it as critical, so it's got to be good. There's uh, a DirectX graphic bug that looks like the browser known, but but need authentication, so that's uh, also a good one. NTLM is an interesting one uh, because an auth bypacker, uh, an auth attacker can bypass authentication on the network. And actually it's easier to do than to say. So that could be something, you know, for lateral movement once uh, after somebody's initial exploits. 
UAF in message queuing. You know, we've seen a bunch of message queuing bugs in the past. They're just not uh, getting exploited. And the uh, same for the RS bugs out there. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, looking at the other code execution bugs, we've got a lot. A lot of office bugs that don't have preview pane, uh, more MSMQ. What's the difference between the critical one and the important one? Inquiring minds would like to know that. Uh, SMB requires a user authentication. Kind of interesting. Uh, the bug in Teams came through ZDI. That's definitely an interesting one. Um, integer underflow. I, I still have integer underflow, so I can't believe it. Uh, and yeah, not a whole lot other. Ooh, here is a neat one. We have an AI bug in GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio. I don't really think it's gonna be exploited in the wild, but hooray, AI bugs, woohoo. A whole bunch of EOP in this release, more than 40 EOP bugs. Most of them are just gonna lead to system level code execution or admin level code execution. Yes, they are different. Um, if an, an authenticated attacker runs specially crafted code, uh, SQL Server, oh. I tell you what, this month, SQL Server admins and Exchange admins, they're going to fight each other to who's got it worst. And uh, I'll tell you, if there's one who's got it both, man, huh, Dominus Stecum, which is Latin for go with God. Uh, I mean, it just, oof. Um, yeah, so there's going to be uh, a lot of SQL changes that you're going to need to make. You have to pay really close uh, attention to the uh, version numbers to make sure that you're fully attached. Uh, with the exchange stuff, you're going to have to apply. Like, they actually patched exchange back in April with a hot fix. They're making that hot fix more mandatory now. They released some more additional stuff on August 7th that I don't talk about here. Um, but there's a lot of config changes you're going to have to do to exchange on-prem or exchange hybrid. And again, you know, I always say the fastest way to, to get fired is to break uh, email and the fastest way to break email is to patch exchange. So good luck. Uh, you've got a lot of lot of work ahead of you. And uh, yeah. So uh, information disclosure, we've got most of them that are just uh, memory uh, bugs. That's off. That's, you know, normal. Uh, you do have some exceptions that one in exchange is interesting uh, because it could uh, disclose whether or not an email is actually valid. That's useful to find out. Um, there's a couple bugs that disclose sensitive information. I don't know what that means, Microsoft. No one knows what that means. Give us some, like a clue. Does that mean anything on the file system? Whatever. Um, the bug that was public, it can just, uh, you know, show some API and internal config stuff. The Azure Stack Hub though, that bug is really interesting because it could disclose administrator account passwords in the logs. Those are useful. That's, that's kind of what uh, those attackers say is like, oh yeah, that's something I want. A uh, couple DOS bugs, nothing major. Again, no information from Microsoft. I'm not going to pound that into uh, the ground this time. There's a bunch of spoofing bug, uh, bugs this month. And initially I thought, oh, this is going to be spoofing like an off bypass like we saw last month with SharePoint. Uh, but they really aren't. Uh, the remote desktop probably is that. But the file explorer bug is uh, kind of questionable. There's no clear uh, what you're spoofing with that. I I'm guessing content, you, you click on blog, you know, post A and you get to post B or something like that. Same for security app, but you know, one could say, well, if I'm spoofing security app, I would be evading its detections. The exchange bugs are clear because you could spoof the from address. Very fun to do in social uh, engineering attacks. So, um, and then the, the spoofing bug in edge is just traffic redirects. There's a tampering bug in exchange, but tampering is a very ill-defined category. They don't really say what's being tampered with. In exchange, you would think that means you're tampering with mailboxes and or uh, different uh, calendar settings or something like that, but there's not really, it just says an authorized attacker to perform tampering over a network. So can't help you out there. Um, and there's, there's cross-site scripting bugs in Dynamics 365. So that is it. And like I said, it's a whole lot, but nothing super crazy out there. There's nothing under active attack. So we've got that going for us, which is good. Uh, hey, I survived summer camp too. So I will be back next month on September 9th for another Patch Tuesday. That's right, another one. We got two Patch Tuesdays before Pondo in Ireland. That's how I measure time. So until then, stay safe and may all your reboots be smooth and clean. <laughs>